Welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Today we're continuing our exploration of uh, ZOS. Uh, as you may remember, I've been giving a login on uh, one of our uh, regular viewers ZOS instance. And uh, in the last video, I looked at the PL1 compiler. Today we're going to be looking at uh, the IBM high level assembler. Um, I've I've done some studying of high-level assembler. Uh, it, it's a very, very um, uh, sophisticated and big product by IBM. It, it's, it's quite an amazing assembler from what I have read, read online um, in the IBM manuals. And um, so I thought today we're just going to explore a little bit um, about the IBM, you know, do a little exploration to the IBM high-level assembler. This is certainly not going to be a tutorial on the high-level assembler because uh, it's such a big and complex product. It would be beyond the scope of the simple video. But um, some people uh, uh, like to watch along as I do the exploration and I enjoy the exploration myself. So uh, why don't we dive in and look a little bit. I've uploaded here um, a, a PDS that I have, a partition data set with some um, assembler um, uh, exercises that, that, that I have done and um, just to keep myself sharp on, uh, on assembler and, um, and so I thought we, we could uh, use this as we um, explore the IBM high level assembler and just for the setup here this is going to be the main window I'm going to be using to um, to, uh, uh, look, to, to look at the code. And then on this window, I just have uh, an instance of uh, Greg Price's IMON monitoring uh, software running so that I can see what's going on in the system while we execute things. So uh, let's look at this uh, assembler, very s small program. Um, I put in the assembler syntax highlighting on. This is obviously ISPF, um, <clears throat> but uh, let's look, look what happens here. Uh, I'm not going to explain too much about assembler uh, uh, in this video, um, just a bare minimum. Print no gen uh, doesn't expand the macros, so let's put it on so we can see what happens with the macros. Um, this is going to be uh, looking at message flags. We obviously have, this is the CSEC, it's called M8EX2, example uh, 2. Uh, we use register 15 for the addressability. Um, and then here we just have something which helps in uh, uh, dump debugging. And uh, this is uh, what I have seen is required if you want to call uh, programs written in PL1. Uh, in ZOS there's called something called language environment or common language environment and um, which is not something we have in MVS 3.8 uh, and so this is the way to uh, create safe areas if you want to be callable from another language or call another language. Um, and then uh, obviously here we save the registers, store multiple set up the base register and then uh, chain, uh, chain to the uh, save area. Um, and so then um, here we have a macro, we get a record. Obviously we first open um, a file for input and a DCB and the file for output. And we obviously then in the JCL we need to have this INDCB and OutDCB specified with data uh, description cards. Uh, eject is just uh, a directive to assembler to go to the next page. Then we get a record. Um, we move a single character from defaults and we'll have to go see what defaults is. Um, okay, this is the data definitions here. But um, let's see what happens here. We move a character to number of flags, uh, load the address of PA mount, 
minus one into register nine. Um, and then we go down to num check. When we come back from non check, we go to post neck if it's positive or negative. And then we go to uh, output to file. And we go back again to the beginnings. This is kind of the, the main loop of the program here. Um, let's see what happens in num check. We have here a reload the address of R9, which is PA mount, um, move zone, uh, compare immediate, and uh, okay, not numeric. Okay, so the several checks we do, and then we check if it's a negative number. It's not a negative number. And then we return back to this place here. So that next instruction then will be this one. Um, then we print the message, we close the two files or data sets. And we start to get ready to return again to the operating system. Use the literal literals are being put here which we use um, for um, and so let's see a message address yeah here we have some literals oops we just have one here so some of the literals here and uh, and then we have the equates. We're still in the literal pool, and uh, and then we have the. Uh, oops, my mouse keeps scrolling. Uh, the INDCB. So that's the DD name is actually INDD. Uh, data synchronization is PS. That's a DCB, the data control block. And then the output is just going to be a uh, printer friendly uh, output record with 80 uh, record length. And then um, we have a separate C sect here. This is the interesting part. Okay. And then we copy regs from the copy book. So we need to make sure the JCL we have access to this regs file. And then that's the end of the program. Okay, so very simple program. Um, this, this program I wrote myself a couple of years ago. Um, let's go look at the JCL. So we have the out DD. We have in DD is uh, sequenced in here. Um, the happy crowd at the Beatles, if you know what I mean. And uh, then we have we're giving it access to the copy books. Let's see if it's there. Uh, copy books. Why is that important? Because we're going to be referencing the regs here. It's the register equates. Okay. Um, And back again to our example. Why don't we just try to run it here? You can see the job running through the system on this window here. Um, let's try this. Mosh XB, job 5078, abandoned with 0, 0 C1. 0 C1 is usually a, a um, 0 address reference. Let's see what it says here. Um, program status word, instruction length of two. Let's see what the compiler says. So this is the beginning of the high level assembler um, output. And we can, we can actually compare this to a uh, later on to an iFox, which is the assembler we have, the FX assembler we have in MVS 3.8.
This is obviously way more sophisticated and modern. Um, and let's see here what it complains about. That's the uh, symbol di dictionary. We have two C sects, this one and this one. Um, let's see here what it complains about. Undefined operation get. Now, we do know, okay, open, that's a macro, and get is another macro. So what do we learn from this? Uh, it doesn't know how to handle the macros. Why does it not know how to handle the macros? Because it doesn't have access to any uh, macro library. And that's probably because of this. Um, because we uh, commented out the syslib for the compiler, which is the sys1 maclib. In every MBS, there's a sys1.macro library which contains all the, uh, we can actually go and look at it. Uh, sys1 maclib and locate get and this is the macro that it doesn't find. Um, interesting, I've never seen this. So this is actually start of appeal x comment ending so this was generated actually by uh, IBM's internal uh, operating system language, uh, which they used to write the operating system, which is called PLX. It's a derivative of PL1. It's a high level language. Um, I've heard about it. The, the precursor of PLX used to be PLS. And PLS was already in use during MBS 3.8 days, certainly for MBS XA. Um, but I've never seen it actually mentioned anywhere but um, so this is the get macro so it's certainly installed here uh, we just have to make sure that we can reference it and this is the other one that it was complaining about status uh, At PLX support. So, as you can see here, IBM did quite a bit of work to make everything 64 bit compatible. So, open can now be used apparently in 64 bit, which makes sense. If you're running above the 2 gigabyte um, marker, you still need to be able to open files. So, that's a QSAM. Open, of course, is a QSAM macro. Um, so, this is all there. Um, let's see if it runs better this way. Job 5079. Yeah, so now it went through. And let's go look at the output. So the options here for the high level assembler are language is English, uh, we are not going to be doing any re-entrancy checks and let's look at the assembler generated, at the machine code generated by the assembler. Uh, so this went all through fine. Then open uh, was expanded here. This is what happens when you do print gen. The assembler expands the macro. And that's basically the macro that we just looked at um, when we went into sys1.maclib. Um, and then we continue the next instruction. Actually, the next instruction was here. And then there's a get, which again is expanded. We also looked at this macro. And it's assembled here into machine code. And obviously there's a lot of reference to, uh, throughout our code, to see here in this column. You see here. But there is, this is because we use uh, register, the using that we have uses register C for, the, for establishing addressability. Because as you know, the uh, IBM mainframe architecture uses uh, relocatable, um, relocatable 
convention so that you need to always provide a registry to establish the addressability of because you're going to be loaded somewhere in memory and the register is going to point at a place in memory and then everything is going to be relative to that register and so that's why we use register 12 and 12 is C and so every address is C and then whatever the content of C is plus then uh, the relative offset of, of uh, register 12 in this case. Um, some registers you cannot use or shouldn't use especially because uh, macros are going to change them but C is a safe register to use in most cases not always um, and then of course at the end uh, we uh, we load multiple um, we reset the registers to what they were before we were hand control over by the operating system and then uh, set the return code to zero and which is register 15 and then branch to register 14 which we just loaded here which is the place the instruction uh, the next instruction from where we were called basically to the hook you know usually the operating system unless we were called ourselves by a previous load module and um, and this is the whole output uh, we can see here that when we said copy regs um, the assembly literally copied uh, the member with our equates into here that's what it does when you say copy it just literally copies that file the content of that file right after the instruction and so uh, we do this so we can use somewhat nicer to read register operations uh, by calling the register instead of just saying 12 or you know um, we can say we can say r12 then the relocation dictionary this is uh, so we can by the way uh, this is high level assembly version 6.0. Okay. Today is, by the way, 1st of December. I did completely forget about that. Um, and then we have the symbol dictionary. And here you see um, which line it was used. And then you have certain explanations. So uh, I think it's at the bottom. Where does it say? Well, it used to be, I think I remember I saw once what the reference type was. M is modified, um, B is not modified. I don't remember what B stands for. I'm sure some of the viewers are gonna drop in some comments about this. Oh yeah, branch. Okay, M is modified, B is branch, U is using, B is drop, and it's index. So um, it's mostly modified in branch. Okay, so <clears throat> so the buffer pool for this assembly was 380 kilobytes, which sounds like a lot compared to the FX assembler that we use in MBS 3.8. That over there it would be very very small amounts maybe four or five kilobytes um, okay this took um, about a quarter of a second to assemble <laughs> um, and now this is something that I've seen also before when we did the PL1 uh, that's the linkage editor and it says here batch emulator this is not something I've seen ever in MBS 3.8 not really sure what batch emulator is but I'll, I'll look it up and then this is the linkage uh, editor that's class offset so the the, the main csect is 309 bytes long but that's in hexadecimal and then the other one is uh, c3 so that's 12 so 12 times uh, about, uh, about 100 bytes. The other one is, is longer, 
this one is hex 309 length um, okay so this is going to be 24 bit we can actually try and going in here and set it to I'm old 31. Let's see what happens. Okay. Where is the A mode? There is some problem somewhere. Let's go see the. Uh, yeah, it's still left at A mode 24, and I think because QSAM is only 24 bit. I may be wrong with that. Um, so, uh, but the job actually ran fine. A mount is positive, so this executed, and this is the. And we can do this thing here, which I really like. So this is the output file, and yeah. So uh, this is the program running just fine, but it's still running in 24-bit now. Not sure. I would have to go and understand why it didn't switch to 31-bit mode. Um, but um, I'll look into it. So. Um, we can also do something else. We can W. Um, this is a different program I wrote to um, produce a WTO um, and print out the register value. As you all know. Um, the way that numbers are being represented in the uh, Z architecture, or S360, S370, and S390 architecture, is numbers are either um, binary or packed. Um, and um, so to have a visual representation of numbers, you need to first unpack them because numbers are packed in uh, the way they're stored internally. And and so um, if you wanted to print a message on the monitor on the console and for instance output value of, of, of the register 5 uh, you have to first convert the number to digit because obviously registers are only binary representation so first you need to convert the content of register 5 into decimal but then it's going to be packed and then you need to unpack it and then um, we're going to be first doing the WTO but we have to change the before we do the macro that calls the write to operator we actually change um, the, the representation of this in the memory um, that's what we're doing here and so we this instruction changes this just before it gets executed. Um, and then in this case, I have the uh, equates here in the same. It's just a little program here, just a, a, a way to, we can actually write here, Moshex, copy books, and then I guess we can let go of this. Why don't we give this a try and see if this works? Job 51. Yeah, this went through. And in the just to log, we should now be able. Oops, we should now be able to see the uh, console output. Let's see if this works. Uh, we don't see the just to 
outputs, I guess. Hmm. And I don't have access to the console. <laughs> but it executed fine, so I know this must have printed something on the console. Um, well, actually, maybe I am able to uh, log. Yep. Uh, if you look at the log output, you see here this line, register R5 value 23. And if you go check here, uh, I loaded the value of 23 into register R5. We can try it with 42, which uh, probably a lot of the viewers here in this video will recognize. 42 is of course uh, the answer to the question about the universe um, from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe. So let's try X and run it again, and then you should be able to see it in the log. Job 5083. And if you see the line, please shout. XX started. I, th I find this in in a little bit annoying. I'm sure there's a way to remove this because I'm you know, in page accounts. I was interested in that. As a developer, I don't really care how much paging that brings us. It did for me. Timing is a little bit more important, but even then, it's just very distracting. But oh, I see it. Um, it's here. So register 5 value is 42 because that's what we just wrote here okay so this all works and um, I find this uh, interesting I so far we haven't done anything at all that we couldn't do with the FX assembler in MBS 3.8 and this just goes to reinforce again something I've said in a different video where I compare MBS 3.8 to ZOS which is 99% of the stuff that I do, um, and probably a lot of other people do, uh, you can do with MBS 3.8. You don't really need ZOS. And I, that you know, I've been working now with this uh, ZOS system that uh, I got a login from 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 this viewer, from Bob. Thank you, Bob. Um, it's it's this just confirms it. I mean, you know, I could do the exact same thing here. With MBS 3.8, the only difference is that obviously with MBS 3.8, I would have access to the console, um, <laughs> probably running here on the same somewhere on my desktop, so I wouldn't have to go through lengths to look at the console. So I, I control the whole system. ZOS is kind of just a user on a mainframe, um, and um, you know we're not doing anything here at all that um, that we couldn't do on MBS 3.8. I mean, most of the stuff is just exactly the same. Uh, just saying here, you know, um, everything. This, you could take this literally as it is, just change the proce procedure here, name, um, and run it in MBS 3.8 with the FX assembler would have the exact same output, still 24 bit. Um, so, um, but uh, this serves as an interesting exercise. Um, we looked at, uh, at, at the high level assembler a little bit. Maybe I'll do something where I do something a little bit more complicated than this. Um, let's see if I have one more example. Mm. Okay, demonstrating BPAM. Okay. Um, let's see here what we have. BPAM should be BSAM, I guess. Basic sequential. Uh, so this is sequential reading. And um, in, in QSAM, QSAM manages um, the reading of blocks and then setting the pointers. When you do BSAM, uh, it's a more basic uh, way. You have to actually manage the pointers to the next block and to the next record uh, yourself. 
and that's why we have, for instance, we have to retrieve the record length, um, and we have to manage where are the records in the file. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, but but um, for instance, uh, DB2 and, and VSAM will use VSAM because they need to know exactly where are where they are within the file. Um, we can we can give this a try. M9EX2. So let's. our BSAM file, a uh, very small one, just one, one track. Okay. Oops, I spot an error. Okay, mm, this should fly. M X two X two. Let's see. This will be interesting. Submit. Job 5084. Oh, this actually went through. Um, yeah. So let's look here. The compile. Fine. Editor went fine. We should be able to uh, go here and have the BSAM file somewhere. Mm, nope. We are not able to see the file, but. Oh. Yeah. If we provide more ships like this, we will be able. copied itself <laughs> over there um, so yeah that's how uh, you do BSAM which is the which is the let's delete this I don't want to get a mess on this system okay um, let's accumulate um, dirt over time the simple mistakes like this uh, and they don't clean up and then you have over years you have many thousands of files that nobody knows what the, if they're important or not um, and, and you know, let's also remember that ZOS is, uh, is a massively multi-user system, of course. And so, if everybody does mistakes like this over time, you will have many thousands of files or data sets that nobody knows about. That's why strict discipline has to be enforced in a production mainframe environment. Uh, this is obviously a developer machine. But, um, let's try this. Run this again normally. Submit job fifty-five. And the condition code zero. Uh, and here it is. 
top of itself over there. Um, let's go look. Oops. Uh, here it is. And that's all there is to it. So it reads the source member and copies itself over to another file. Please and read. As you can see here, we have to manage the pointers to the records. Each line is a record. And that's what I did here in this program. This is partitioned organized. So because we're reading, of course, from a, a PDS, because the source code is inside a PDS, and we are putting into partition sequential. That's all there is to it. Very, very simple program. Works fine. We are obviously in address mode, 24-bit. I'll have to go check on the manual how to switch to 31-bit mode because that's the whole fun here in, in uh, accessing a ZOS system. Anyway, so um, as you can see, there's really not much difference at all, uh, other than we're working with ISPF here, which is a little bit different. But between me and the rest of the world, all of you, I actually I'm so used to RFE. I prefer the RFE. A productivity environment we have in uh, TK4 on our MBS 3.8 there. Um, I, I don't think I will be using the ZOS much much longer. I, I thank Bob very much for uh, giving me access but as you can see we can do exact same thing on MBS 3.8 and then it's on my machine and I completely control it and, and uh, so uh, a fun uh, way to confirm what I already thought and uh, I hope you appreciate watching this video with me. I um, wish you all a great day and uh, please do subscribe uh, to the Moshix Mainframe channel if you want to get uh, notifications of future videos. If you like this particular video, please press on the thumbs up button. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Bye.